Hello. I hope you're doing very, 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 very well. I am. I lost power last night. I just got it back. I took a shower. I have moors. I'm alone for like two days, completely alone. It's, it's, it's goddamn amazing. I think I'm gonna drive to Ikea, which is only like a two hour drive. And then I'm just gonna wander around, probably not buy anything and come back because I can. And then I'm probably gonna drink a glass of wine, watch some horrible girly television. I'm excited. I wasn't even going to make a video, uh, but I was sitting here and I was like, I have mores, I'm clean. It was like the perfect, the perfect storm. It's a beautiful day. Let's uh, smoke some more. Because those of you who love mores know like me. I love moors, despite that I haven't had them for a while. Um, know that I fucking love them. It's been like, I was saying six months, but I think it's been longer. It's been a long time since I've had moors. And they are stronger. I thought, I thought the Lucky Strike 100s were, I mean, the gold Lucky Strike 100 Golds. The Golds, I thought they weren't that mild, um, but they're mild compared to the flip-flopping around shows you. Pizza. The cat's name is Pizza. I'm not just looking off camera saying, Pizza, Pizza. Big old cat butt in my stub. I've been listening to a lot of podcasts lately. I've been listening to Morbid. Um, so they have a bunch. They have like over 400 episodes or something. But I love the like the murder stories from the 1900s. It seems like as long as you weren't physically there uh, when you kill, like when the police showed up, when they eventually figured out someone was dead in the 1900s, like you just got away with it. Like unless you left your dance card, your calling card, like on the body, like there was, there was just nothing. Which is, I'm glad it's not like that anymore, you know. Um, but it was just very interesting. It's like, I guess that's why there were so many serial killers that got away with it so easily. But I like hearing about all the things from the, that time period. And I guess the, I was reading, uh, what is it, The Haunted Looking Glass? It is a collection of horror stories from the 1900s. And I was reading that when the power was out by candlelight last night, as one does when the power is out. And they were all good. I kept earmarking the ones that I wanted to find more stories by the author. And then like by the time I got done, I realized I'd earmarked like all but like one or two of the stories. Good problem. Oh, Moors. 
I knew I missed you, but I didn't realize I missed you this much. Let's never be apart that long again. French inhales are so much more satisfying when they're done with mores. I don't know why. Maybe because they're so slim and long. It's just, hmm. I don't know what it's not gonna sound like it tastes good but it does it, it's like it's almost like an old book but not I mean that sounds yucky that sounds like something you would you would not want in your mouth but it's it's a very grounding like maybe it's not a taste it's like a just a feel Or maybe they're just stale. I don't think they are. Mm. When I cracked into the first package of Moore's, uh, this is the second pack from this box. Oh, what is I completely lost my train of thought because I'm old. Oh, um, it did, it, they do go out, especially when they get lower. And I was like, I forgot this about molars, but they do. But it's okay. The lucky strike goes out with this much left. I just let it die because they're like $4 a pack. But these are not. And so when mores go out, I will like it. I'm wearing my boots, my boots from um, Holland. I love these. Brand I can't even say. So I can't even start to say. It. Okay. Yeah, it's so weak. There's so. It's such a long name. Here. Let's take it off. Look, it's so long. That look at how long this has to be to fit it in. It's Fred de la Brintonaire. I've never heard of them before I went there, but I saw these and I was like, I must have those Fred de la Brintonaires. <coughs> that is not, it's not from smoking. I've had a, I, I was sick last week. I just had a little bit of a lingering cough. The lungs are perfect. It's fine. Oh, one thing about that podcast that I noticed, um, Morbid, the, these, these two girls, uh, what, I guess aunt and niece, but, um, one is the aunt and one is the niece, but, like, they always just really just chastise these, uh, murderers, like, I mean, yes, they're murderers, they're, they're terrible, but like this, they, they really just get into it. They're just like, you dirty little worm. Like, and I'm like, oh, like, <laughs> I, I kind of like, I like it. 
uh, is very aggressive. Um, they don't like stop there. They like really just, like go after it. Um, I appreciate that. Hello, Tennessee. The black cat. Tennessee. I put stuff in your bowl so you. Oh, you still love me. Come here. I thought he might leave me alone since he already got what he wanted from me. You're a dirty little worm. Dirty little whore. You're a good boy. You're a good kitty. You love me even though you already got what you wanted out of me. It's very uncat like. Don't spill my monster. Don't do it. You don't like it when I pick you up. Cats don't like it when you pick them up. Nope. cats I had growing up just put up with it because they broke their their souls very early on. But Tennessee was already an adult when he started liking me, so his soul's not broken. And I'm not as evil as I was when I was little, so I'm not going to do it to him. Those poor cats, though, I had growing up. Like, I put doll clothes on them and stuff, pushed them around in strollers. They just... But they acted like they loved it. It wasn't like they were meowing and fighting me. I think it's because they were kittens and I was like five. We both just assumed that this, is, this was our roles. This was our reality. Just, they were my playthings and they were like, I guess this is okay because I get food and she likes it, so. Nothing really blew away last night. It's amazing. The, the wind was blowing so hard, I was like, is the glass going to crack? Which would be amazing because my house is like over a hundred years old. And so, I mean, it still has the original glass in most of the windows that weren't busted out when I bought it and I had to replace them because it was abandoned for a while. But I was like, most of this glass survived a hundred years of storms. Like, is tonight really gonna be the night that it goes? And it, none of it broke, amazingly, but it was a wild storm. Must be the first time in five years I've lost power. And Corinne was like the, right there, Corinne was like the only house in my whole neighborhood that still had its power because her house is built, her house is like 20 years old and they ran the line from the road. So she was fine, which I'm glad she has a baby, that's good. But it's, it's like, she doesn't have another fucker. She still has power. Hmm. At least we got it back this morning. It's not that bad. Just enough for me to be grateful that electricity exists. You might like hearing the 1900 stories, but I don't want to live in the 1900. whole bathroom situation, I mean.
these two behind me. You know what color the house is today? I have no idea. I don't know. And then they had those glass, those gas lights that were being converted to electricity if you lived in a really nice house. But it seems like having the gas going through the same light fixture that would also have electricity seems not smart. The knob and tube wiring really just feels like the 1900s were a death trap. You know, when you weren't drinking arsenic or not drinking it, what did they do? They, they took arsenic patches or little pieces of arsenic and then they would chew on them. Maybe not that. Maybe not the heroin and all the medicine. A lot of the medicine. The alcohol and a lot of the medicine though. I mean, it would help a lot of ailments. At least you wouldn't feel it. And the opium dens, dens, which I'm sure were very uh, not wholesome, but they sound romantic looking back on them, but I'm sure they weren't. Probably just very sad. I guess the 19th century version of the crack house. But when they show them in the movies, they look very well designed. I feel completely at peace today. It's very nice. Tennessee, you have rubbed all of the leaves off of the cat mint, which is cat nip, but the little cute ceramic label I have for it says cat mint because it's adorable. Oh, yeah, I almost got another. I guess I'm feeling this nicotine level. Shit. Yeah, these are pretty strong. It's amazing the difference that extra 20 millimeters adds because I'm used to smoking hundreds, but this just feels so much longer. That's what she said. There's no one here to, else to say it. Okay, so I have to say it if I'm going to say something like that. Tennessee's cleaning his paw is painfully adorable. Cats are such cute assholes. If 
Imagine, imagine if cats were not cute with how much of assholes they are. Imagine if they were just like these hideous little creatures that like sometimes lived in neighborhoods and you're just like, ah, like you're a jerk and you're not adorable. Like, be real. That'd be funny. Oh boy. I'll explain this in a second. woman who walks around my neighborhood sometimes and every time she sees me out she asks me for a cigarette and I always give her one but she's actively already smoking so it makes me think that she must have gotten one from someone else but she always has the most wonderful stories as to why she needs a cigarette maybe not the most wonderful story she's like my sister-in-law was gonna bring me cigarettes and I'm waiting on her and it's always some family member that was like definitely bringing her cigarettes and she didn't get me but I guess she didn't feel comfortable bumming one since she was already smoking she always talks to me but I guess this setup scared her off hmm she seems so fearless, I wonder why it would. Huh. Kind of insulted. No, I'm not. Hmm. I've never told someone no for giving them a cigarette. So when you need one, and you see someone smoking, you just say, Smokers are always so courteous, too. They're always like, can I give you a dollar for a cigarette? It's like that. That would be highway robbery. It's like a pack of Lucky Strikes is four bucks. There are 20 in there. And you... But not, the, not in New York City. Whenever I'm in New York City or San Francisco and someone asks, they don't generally offer money. But around here. If I'm smoking and someone asks, they always offer money with it. And it's funny whenever I used to smoke nothing but Moors, that was expensive, and I'd always give them one, and they would be like, like, what the fuck is this? Like, is this a joint? What is this? And I'd be like, oh, this is a weird looking cigarette. Anyway, I'm going to go uh, get into shit because we have a whole day. Absolutely fucking nothing. It's awesome. So I hope you have a very good day and I will see you next time. Bye.